Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. So today's topic in oral surgery is local anesthesia. Uh, this is a huge topic, this will be dealt in 3 or 4 sessions. So today's session is about uh, the mechanism, the repolarization, depolarization and action potential mechanism and the basic uh, things of local anesthesia. So next session uh, we have the theories of uh, local anesthesia and uh, then we have the properties, um, the local anesthetic solution and its classification. So all will be covered in uh, future sessions. So today's session is about uh, the mechanism that is the action potential mechanism across the nerve membrane. How the polarization is happening, the resting potential and how it is getting changed and what is the role of local anesthetic in this polarization. So all this will be dealt in today. So let's start learning local anesthesia. The loss of sensation in a circumscribed area of the body caused by depression of excitation in nerve endings or an inhibition of the conduction process in peripheral nerves. So it is going to act on the nerves either on the nerve endings or the conduction process okay either it depresses the excitation of nerve endings or it inhibits the conduction process in peripheral nerves that is how it is creating the anesthesia so it is a loss of sensation without inducing loss of consciousness there is no loss of consciousness like general anesthesia so we have uh, lots of method to produce this Local anesthesia such as low temperature, mechanical trauma, and anoxia, uh, neurolytic agents such as uh, alcohol or phenols, and the chemical agents such as local anesthetics. So these are the other methods for producing local anesthesia. So not just local anesthetics does anesthesia. We have local low temperature, mechanical trauma, anoxia, uh, neurolytic agents such as alcohol and phenols. So all can produce the effect of local anesthesia. So what are the properties of local anesthesia? So the properties we have instead synonym i for non irritating okay non irritating because it should not be irritating to tissues to which it is applied then it is related to nerve it should not cause any permanent alteration of the nerve structure then the systemic effect should be very low because anyway it is going to enter in the blood circulation so it not it should not create any systemic toxicity then the time of onset should be short time of onset should be short then it should be effective effective regardless of whether it is injected into the tissue or applied locally to mucous membranes it should be effective and the duration of action so it should be long enough to permit the completion of procedure that is the duration so we need to have proper local anesthetic effect so that we can complete the surgical procedure so it should be non irritating should not create any permanent damage to nerve structure the systemic toxicity should be very low and it should be having very low or short time of onset and it should be effective irrespective of uh, if it is injecting or if we are applying it uh, on the mucous membrane and we should have enough duration of action and also it should have the potency sufficient to give complete anesthesia without the use of harmful concentration solutions and it should be free from producing allergic reactions and it should be free in solution and relatively 
undergo biotransformation in the body. It should be either sterile or capable of being sterilized by heat without deterioration. So these are the uh, properties of local anesthesia. Now let's learn the electrophysiology of nerve conduction. So this is important part electrophysiology. So what exactly is happening at the nerve membrane where the local anesthetic going to work. So we have a nerve membrane here. Let this be the nerve membrane. Okay. And this is inside the nerve membrane and this is outside the nerve membrane. This is outside. This is inside. Okay. So usually the outside the nerve membrane we have positive charges. Okay. So this is positively charged and inside we have usually negatively charged we have negative charged inside so this is our nerve membrane and there will be always a electric charge across the membrane so that is known as membrane potential okay membrane potential So, this membrane potential is also known as resting potential which is equal to minus 70 milliwatt. That is the resting potential. So, without any excitation, without any changes in the cell, this will be the electric vault which is existing between or the membrane surface. So, we learned what is membrane potential. Now let's learn what is action potential. Okay, so action potential is nothing but when this membrane potential is going to change under stimulation or fiber uh, excitation. Okay, so this is outside and this is inside. Outside we have positively charged and this is negatively charged. So this minus 70 millivolt is because of the gradient okay so we have lots of positive charge and lots of negative charge so the change in concentration gradient across the membrane is resulting minus 70 millivolt so when there is an action potential before we have all the channels or the sodium potassium channels are closed at resting potential so when this nerve fiber is excited or stimulated what happens is the sodium channel will be opened okay so this is the inside area this is the outside area so from outside there will be influx of sodium ions so lots of sodium ions will be entering okay so sodium ions will be entering into the Cell membrane. So once the sodium ions enters from outside to inside, this process will be takes place. This is known as depolarization. That is a polarity is going to change. So the sodium channel closes once it enters and it reaches level. The minus 70 will be become plus 20 that is depolarization happened okay so this minus become positive because of the influx of sodium ions so the sodium channel will be closed because it is depolarized okay so we have sodium channel closed so after that what happens is the nerve membrane or the nerve tries to go back to its original position or original state that is a resting potential to maintain the equilibrium. So again one more channel will be opened that is not the sodium it is potassium okay so from inside 
there is out flux of potassium okay until it reaches minus 70 millivolt okay so resting potential we have depolarization and this is known as repolarization because we revert the polarity okay before it was depolarized now it is repolarized because we revert back so that is minus 70 mp we went back to the resting potential so once it is reached minus 70 what happens is this channel also will be closed so it is like resting potential where sodium and potassium channels are closed so during depolarization sodium channel open and it enters it reaches plus 20 that is depolarization then potassium going outward and balancing to reach the minus 70 millivolt so this voltage gradient along axon causing a current okay this causes configurational change in sodium channel in the next segment and the conduction process is happening so this is how the electro uh, reaction happening in nerve endings or in nerve membrane okay that is a depolarization and repolarization mechanism so what exactly uh, happening with respect to the two types of nerve membrane so we have uh, two types of nerve membrane uh, one we know uh, myelinated and the second one is unmyelinated so it differs from myelinated and unmyelinated so this uh, impulse uh, spread from one segment to another segment because a depolarized segment impulse will be spread to the next segment so the propagated impulse travels along the nerve membrane towards the cns okay the spread of impulse uh, the rate of speed is differ in myelinated and unmyelinated so first let's take unmyelinated nerve fibers so unmyelinated nerve fiber it doesn't have a myelin sheath so because of this it has high resistance cell membrane and extracellular media it produces a rapid decrease in density of current within a short distance of depolarized segment so it doesn't have a myelin sheath so it will be producing a rapid decrease in density of current so what happens is the spread of impulse is characterized as a slow forward creeping process slow forward creeping process it cannot propagate in a very fast manner so the conduction rate is very slow 1.2 meter per second and it goes uh, like this so if we have a nerve membrane here and we have this impulse so just go like this okay so uh, the impulse moves forward by sequential depolarization of short adjoining membrane segments okay but whereas on the myelinated nerve fiber so in myelinated nerve fiber it's a different story so the current leaps from nodes to nodes is happening not the sequential depolarization so here the impulse goes like this from nodes to nodes here it was sequential depolarization so the impulse moves forward by sequential depolarization of short adjoining membrane segments okay but here it is impulse leaps forward from one node to another one so the myelinated nerve fiber process the nerve impulse from nodes to nodes forward movement is known as saltatory conduction so it is more rapid in thicker nerves because of increase in thickness of myelin sheath and increase in distance between the adjacent nodes of 
Ranware. So this is the nodes of Ranware. So if conduction of impulse is blocked at one node of uh, you know, the local current will skip over that node and prove adequate to raise that membrane potential at next node to its firing potential and produce depolarization. So that the process will not be stopped if uh, there is blockage at one node. So it will jump to the next one. It will skip that particular node and jump to the next one. So the conduction here it was just 1.2 meter per second but here it is almost 120 meter per second almost 100 times faster in myelinated nerve fibers and now we are going to learn the basic mechanism of local anesthesia so so far we finished our electrophysiology of the nerve fiber how the repolarization depolarization is happening now the local anesthetic action so this local anesthetic agent interferes with the excitation process so it can be done in uh, many ways the first one is uh, changing the resting potential of nerve membrane so we know what is resting potential so the first mechanism of this local anesthetic is changing the resting potential then changing the threshold potential so this local anesthetic will increase the threshold potential so it will remain repolarized so there will be uh, less chances of depolarization so ultimately local anesthetic is increasing the rate of repolarization that is it is not allowing depolarization so increasing the rate of repolarization and decreasing depolarization so repolarization is the process happened when we apply local anesthesia because there is no depolarization or it prolongs the repolarization or decrease the depolarization so that's all about uh, local anesthesia so we can say it as a part one where we discussed about the action potential the membrane potential the sequential depolarization the saltatory conduction and local anesthesia mechanism that is changing the resting potential uh, threshold potential or increasing the repolarization or decreasing the depolarization the electrophysiology so this is the introduction part of local anesthesia so the next session is about the various theories of local anesthesia so we have uh, many theories such as uh, acetylcholine theory calcium displacement theory surface charge theory membrane expansion theory then uh, specific receptor uh, so all these theories we are going to learn in next session okay so i'll come back with the theories of local anesthesia in my next session thank you Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry Anmo. So we are continuing our local anesthesia sessions. So this session is about theories of uh, mechanism of action of local anesthetics. So there are various theories uh, which has been put forward over the years to explain the mechanism of action of local anesthetics. The first one was acetylcholine theory. Acetylcholine theory. which stated that acetylcholine was uh, involved in nerve conduction in addition to its role as a neurotransmitter at nerve synapses. So it is basically a nerve synapse uh, neurotransmitter but it has got a uh, role in local anesthesia. That is what this theory is saying. But uh, there is no scientific evidence 
uh, to prove that acetylcholine is involved in neural transmission so it was uh, uh, rejected in its first place so so the second theory was uh, calcium displacement theory so this theory states that the nerve block or local anesthetic nerve block was produced by displacement of calcium from some membrane site which controlled permeability of sodium so sodium is uh, the key element which is involved in local anesthesia because we have seen in uh, our last session how sodium is involved in depolarization and repolarization so when the sodium enters to uh, cell membrane the depolarization starts so sodium is a key element so calcium displacement theory highlighting the involvement of sodium and next theory we have surface charge repulsion theory surface charge or repulsion theory so it says that local anesthetics acted by binding to nerve membrane and changing the electric potential at the membrane surface so we have the nerve membrane so it has positive outside and negative inside okay so let it be the outside and this be the inside so negative charge is inside and positive charge on outside so this local anesthetics will bind to the nerve membrane and changing the electrical potential at the membrane surface so the cationic membrane cationic molecules that is the cationic drug molecules align at the membrane water interface okay so we have this lmm positive charges which is aligned here so since the cationic drug molecules aligned at uh, the membrane interface so some of the local anesthetic molecule carried a net positive charge they made the electrical potential at the membrane surface more positive so what happens when it become more positive it decreases the excitability of nerve by increasing the threshold potential so when we have more positive charge here it increases the threshold potential that means the action potential needs more depolarization potential so it will be in that repolarization phase but the problem is there is no such evidence which indicate that resting potential of nerve membrane is affected by la molecules so this theory was rejected okay so there is no concept uh, scientific evidence says that there is changing in threshold potential by the la molecules so it was not uh, accepted one whereas the fourth one is membrane expansion theory membrane expansion theory membrane expansion theory it states that local anesthetic molecule diffuses to hydrophobic uh, regions of membranes and produce a disturbance in the bulk membrane structure and expand the membrane and preventing uh, increasing uh, the permeability to sodium ions if this is the membrane so what happens is uh, there is uh, the la molecules enters and this will be changed to different shape okay or it expands so it prevents the uh, increase in permeability to sodium ions so lipid soluble la solutions can easily penetrate through the lipid portions of cell membrane changing the configuration of this lipoprotein matrix of nerve membrane which results in decreased diameter of sodium channel so we you know we have channels sodium channels we have learned in our first session sodium channels where sodium enters to the cell membrane and causes a depolarization 
so sometimes as per this membrane expansion theory it decreases the sodium channel diameter or it uh, expands the membrane and preventing uh, an increase in permeability of sodium ions so ultimately uh, there will be inhibition of sodium conduction and thereby novel excitation so the ultimate aim is to prevent the entry of sodium into nerve membrane okay so that is the key thing when sodium enters to this what happens is there is depolarization so that is a membrane expansion theory and the most accepted theory is specific receptor theory okay so this is a entirely different mechanism uh, compared to all the four other theories so this theory says that local anesthetics act by binding to specific receptors in the sodium channel okay so we know what is sodium channel so sodium channel will be having a receptors a specific receptor where the local anesthetic molecules will get binded to so that is the mechanism okay so not the acetylcholine or calcium displacement or surface charge or membrane expansion so this is a real mechanism how the la works so there will be a receptors which is present on the sodium channel where the la molecules get attached to okay so it is not mediated by any change in the general properties of cell membrane but the action of drug is very direct not changing by membrane potential or expanding or anything that sort of this is direct action directly attaching to this receptors which is on the sodium channel and doing the la action so once it is attached to this there will be biochemical and electrophysiological uh, changes happening and the mechanism is very simple once the molecule la molecule is attached to the specific receptors the permeability to sodium ion is decreased okay so only when the sodium ions enters into the cell membrane the depolarization happens so what we want is repolarization the prolonged repolarization we don't want depolarization we just want continuous repolarization state so it is not letting the sodium ions to enter into this membrane so the permeability to sodium ion is decreased or eliminated and the nerve conduction is interrupted okay so that is a mechanism so this is the most acceptable one specific receptor theory so we learned uh, this class was about the theories acetylcholine calcium displacement surface charge membrane expansion and the most acceptable one that is specific receptor theory so hope you understood this concept of theories of local anesthesia mechanism so i'll come up with next topic uh, that is the properties or the components um, of local anesthesia uh, what are the components which is present in local anesthesia and its uh, function so i'll come up with that topic uh, thank you everyone welcome back to another session in dentistry and more so we are continuing our local anesthetic sessions so this session is about local anesthetic agent components so what are the components and its function in a local anesthetic agent so we'll start uh, straight away so we have the basic local anesthetic agent can be xylocaine or uh, lignocaine the second one is vasoconstrictor commonly used one is adrenaline which is in the dilution of 1 is 2 80000 and the third one is reducing agent which is a uh, the product used is sodium meta bisulfate and preservative is methyl paraben then fungicide is thymol and vehicle can be either distilled water or sodium chloride so the first component is a basic local anesthetic agent uh the commonly used in dentistry are xylocaine and lignocaine so it is 2% each 
so it is a dilution factor it is nothing but 2 gram in 100 ml so that is a weight by volume measurement so this is the component which uh, produces local anesthesia the next thing is vasoconstrictor so what is the role of vasoconstrictor so from the name we get the idea it is to constrict the vessels so commonly used is adrenaline or epinephrine it is to counteract uh, the vasodilatory action by constricting the blood vessels so what it does is it decreases the blood flow to the injection area and the absorption of the local anesthetic into the cardiovascular system is slowed which results in lower anesthetic level and thereby minimizing the risk of local anesthesia toxicity so it also increases the duration of anesthesia by allowing the local anesthesia to remain around the nerve for a longer period of time so on a shot it does three jobs one is decrease the blood flow decrease the blood flow to the injection area then decrease the toxicity because uh, it slows the uh, absorption into cardiovascular system and also increases the duration so that uh, it stays around the nerve for a longer period of time so what is the role of vasoconstrictor we learned so what is the uh, overdosage uh, result in so if we use more uh, vasoconstrictor more concentration of vasoconstrictor what happens is it will uh, taken up to the bloodstream which causes increase in the systolic and diastolic blood pressure at it increases the cardiac output and stroke volume so these actions lead to an overall decrease in cardiac efficiency so always when we uh, do uh, local anesthesia for a cardiac patient or someone with cardiac disease we should always uh, remove the adrenaline from the local anesthetic agent we give just plain local anesthesia to uh, avoid the side effects of vasoconstrictor with respect to such patients and regarding the dilution factor so this is 1 is to 80,000 that means 1 gram per 80,000 milliliter or we can say 0.8 milligram per ml that is the amount per unit volume okay so that is a dilution factor so that much diluted uh, quantity we are using in LA agent that is a adrenaline or epinephrine so the next component is reducing agent or antioxidants uh, the product is sodium metabisulfate so this vasoconstrictor has one problem uh, because it is very unstable in solution and may oxidize especially on prolonged exposure to sunlight so once it is uh, oxidized the color will become uh, brown and that is an indication that the solution uh, must be discarded so we need to prevent that so in order to prevent that we add sodium metabisulfate as a reducing agent okay so this reducing agent will compete for this available oxygen and the shelf life of the local anesthesia or local anesthetic solution will increase so reducing agent uh, are compounds uh, which uh, donates electron because it is very highly reactive uh, compounds so which donates electrons and become reduced and oxidizing agents which accept electrons and oxidized so hope you all remember the uh, redox reaction the oxidation and reduction uh, reduction so reduction uh, where it is donating electron oxidation where it is accepting electron so reducing agent we add this to increase the shelf life okay because this will compete for available oxygen oxygen is very bad for this vasoconstrictor next we have preservative preservative uh, is methyl paraben or caprail hydrocuprino toxin so modern la solutions are very stable basically and often have a shelf life of two years or more 
so their sterility is maintained by the inclusion of small amount of preservatives such as methyl um, hydrocopinotoxin and also we have another one which is uh, methyl paraben but it has some uh, disadvantages that is it is producing some allergic reaction for few people next we have fungicide fungus in the past uh, the some solutions uh, it tended to become cloudy due to the proliferation of uh, minute uh, fungus so in order to avoid that uh, most of the solutions nowadays uh, add a little bit of thymol which is a fungicide to prevent the occurrence of this uh, fungal clouding and vehicle which is uh, distilled water or sodium chloride so this anesthetic agent and the additives referred to all the additives are dissolved in distilled water and sodium chloride so this isotonic solution minimizes the discomfort during injection and uh, there will be also presence of sodium hydroxide to adjust the pH and the last component is nitrogen bubbles so there will be nitrogen bubbles within the cartridge uh, it is uh, to put to avoid the entrapment of oxygen so if oxygen is there the problem is with vasoconstrictor so oxygen will destroy the vasoconstrictor that is adrenaline or epinephrine so to avoid that uh, there will be nitrogen uh, bubble presence in the cartridge. So these are the components of a uh, local anesthetic agent. The basic component is xylocaine or lignocaine, two percentage. Then we have vasoconstrictor, that is adrenaline, and one is to eighty thousand. That is a dilution. It decreases the blood flow to the site, decreases the uh, systemic toxicity, and increases the duration of action. Then the reducing agent, which is the antioxidant, which is compete for the oxygen and get reduced, which is sodium metabisulfate. Then we have preservative, methyl paraben and capril hydro cupnotoxin. Then fungicide is thymol, and all this will be added in the vehicle, distilled water and sodium chloride. And we add sodium hydroxide to adjust pH and nitrogen bubble to prevent the entrapment of oxygen. It's a very commonly asked uh, short essay or short note in oral surgery exam. So I'll come up with the next part of local anesthesia. Hope you understood this small concept. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. So we are continuing local anesthesia part 4. So this session is about classification and the concept of dissociation of uh, local anesthetic and the most important Hunters and Hasselbach equation. Okay, so let's start with the classification. So the first classification category is biological site and mode of action. So biological site and mode of action. So in this category we have A, B, C, D. So the class A. So agents acting at receptor sites on external surface of nerve membrane. So this is acting on the external surface. So the most common example is uh, biotoxins. So which is acting on the external surface. So the class B. Okay, so this is class A, class B, class C and class D. So in class B, so it is the acting agents which is acting on receptor sites on internal surface of nerve membrane, internal surface. Example is uh, lidocaine and scorpion venom, scorpion venom and lidocaine. Lidocaine is quaternary ammonium analogs of lidocaine. 
whereas a class C so the agents acting by receptor independent of physiochemical mechanism which is benzocaine okay which is the receptor independent of physiochemical mechanism and class D agents acting by combination of receptors and receptor independent mechanism so most common examples are the lidocaine prilocaine and mepivacaine so here also we have one lidocaine that is nothing but quaternary ammonium analogs so this is class a b c d based on the biological site and mode of action next we have based on the source so from where it is obtained that is natural synthetic and others okay next based on the mode of application can be topical or injectable next is based on the duration of action so ultra short it is very very lesser duration then short then medium and long so based on the onset of action short we have intermediate and long so that's all about classification now let's see what is dissociation of local anesthetics so local anesthetics are available as salts usually hydrochlorides for clinical use so the salts both water soluble and stable is dissolved in either sterile water or saline so in this solution it exists simultaneously as unchanged molecule so this is the unchanged molecule without any charge which is called as base and positively charged molecule which is known as cations so this is equation so the relative concentration of each ionic form in the solution varies in the ph of the solution or surrounding tissues so in the presence of high concentration of hydrogen ion that is low ph we have very high concentration of hydrogen ions so what happens is the equilibrium shifts to left and most of the anesthetic solution exists in cationic form so this will become there will be shifting equilibrium shifting to left okay whereas the hydrogen ion concentration decreases that is a higher ph when this is decreases that means high ph the equilibrium shift towards a free base form that is more number of free base form will be available so that is depending upon the ph so when there is a low ph the more of cationic form will be present when there is high ph more of base form will be available so the relative proportion of this ionic form also depends on the dissociation constant which is known as dissociation dissociation constant that is pka so this pka is nothing but measure of molecules affinity for h plus ions what is the affinity towards h plus ions is what meant by pka so when the ph of the solution has the same value as pka of local anesthetics 
exactly half of the drug will exist as RNH plus and the other half will be in RN form okay so this RNH will be equal to RN that is when pH of the solution pH of the solution has the same value as pKa of the local anesthetic okay so this ionic form will be equal to as base form when pH is equal to pKa of that is a dissociation constant of local anesthetic so the percentage of drug exist in either form can be determined so in which form the drug or percentage of drug uh, existing in the solution can be determined by an equation which is known as Hunterson Hasselbalch equation okay so this equation actually determines how much of a local anesthetic will be in a non ionized versus ionized form based on the tissue pH and the pKa of local anesthetic so the injectable local anesthetics are weak bases so injectable local anesthetic are weak bases though dissociation constant will be around 7.5 to 9.5 so when a local anesthetic is injected into tissues it is neutralized and part of the ionized form is converted to non ionized so part of the ionized form will be converted to non ionized and this non ionized base is what diffused into the nerve so this is what diffused into the nerve okay so when we inject the local anesthetics into the tissues it is neutralized and part of the ionized form is converted to non ionized form and the non ionized base is what diffuses into nerve so hence if the tissue is infected so many cases we might face a patient has infection okay in that case why the LA is not working properly because when the tissue is infected the pH is lower the pH is very low because it is more acidic because it has infection so according to this equation there will be less of the non ionized form okay the presence of this non ionized form will be very less when there is an infection so this RN is very less to cross the nerve membrane okay so no the less number of non ionized form of local anesthetic tract to cross into the nerve membrane so the LA will be less effective so that is why in acidic condition or in infection cases the LA won't work that is the reason because if the infection is there it will be more acidic the pH is very low and as per the equation there will be very less amount of non ionized form to cross the nerve membrane so this is what actually crossing the nerve membrane so less number of RN or the base form to cross the membrane it will be less effective so next part is mechanism of action of local anesthetic LA mechanism okay so we already learned it so LA mechanism so these are the sequence the first thing is displacement of calcium ion from the sodium channel receptor site so we have this receptor site okay so this is the receptor site receptor site this is a sodium channel sodium channel so what happens is the calcium ion is displaced from sodium channel receptor site so calcium ions will be displaced from this receptor site so the binding of local anesthetic molecule to this receptor site so the our RN molecule will be binding here first thing is calcium displacement then the RN molecule the local anesthetic molecule binds to the receptor site 
so it blocks the sodium channel so what it does is it blocks the sodium channel okay so that is the ultimate aim so once the sodium enters there will be depolarization but we want repolarization so there will be decrease sodium conductance so it depresses the rate of electrical depolarization and there will be failure to achieve the threshold potential level because there is no sodium going inside and lack of propagated action potential and there will be conduction blockade conduction blockade so this is what is happening okay so from receptor side calcium will be displaced the la molecule will be attached to this receptor site the sodium channel the conduct the conduction will be reduced the sodium channel will be blocked and there will be decrease sodium conductance decrease rate of electrical depolarization and failure to achieve threshold potential level and lack of development of propagated action potential so that is what is happening the sodium ion channel is blocked in pain neurons okay so that is all about uh, this session so we discussed uh, the classification of local anesthesia then about the dissociation how the la molecule is changing from cation to base form and the famous equation and finally the mechanism how the la molecules blocks the sodium channel so i'll come up with another topic in oral surgery thank you hello everyone welcome back to another session in dentistry and more today's topic in local anesthesia we'll be learning about the complications so the local complications and uh, systemic complications so this is a uh, part 5 of our local anesthesia sessions so moving on local complications of anesthesia that is first one is needle breakage then the ocular complications paresthesia facial nerve paralysis trismus soft tissue injury hematoma pain on injection infection edema whereas on systemic complications we have overdose and allergy so we'll start with the local complications the first one is needle breakage so this is uh, quite rare because of uh, using uh, disposable needles but uh, if it happens it is uh, due to mainly because of bending of needles if you are try to bend the needle for any purpose the chances of breakage then it could be due to sudden unexpected movement of the patient or sometimes uh, the entire length of the needle inserted into the soft tissue and uh, we suddenly move or the patient tries to move there are chances of breakage and use of smaller needles that is 40 gauge uh, needles we are using there are chances of breakage so how do we prevent this the first thing is uh, always use uh, large gauge needles especially for ia and b and posterior superior alveolar nerve block and use always uh, long needles and do not insert the needle into tissues to its hub so completely we should not insert into tissue and do not redirect a needle once it is inserted into tissue so de- redirecting is always uh, comes uh, with our ia and b so it should be done cautiously because there are chances of breakage so we can uh, manage it uh, because if the needle breakage is visible now uh, we need to keep the patient uh, calm and instruct the, instruct the patient not to move and keep his mouth open and it can be removed using a hemostat or a intubation forceps if it is not visible uh, we can refer the patient to 
uh, for the surgically uh, removing this and before that we can take an x-ray and confirm it that is needle breakage the second one is ocular complications so there are chances of temporary blindness pupillary dilation uh, droopy eyelid or double vision because of this local anesthesia and the cause is orbital injunction that is the injection into the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure so it uh, it is uh, causing damage and there are chances of ocular complications so prevention uh, we need to aspirate before the injection and we need to inject very slowly so if any complications is there we can uh, treat it by telling the patient that this is a transient this is a temporary problem and cover the affected eye with gauze dressing and refer the patient to an ophthalmologist and we need to keep a regular follow-up the third one is parasitia parasitia the main cause is trauma to the nerve while uh, giving a block or injection so local anesthesia sometimes contaminated by alcohol or sterilizing solution and with this contaminated solution we give uh, anesthesia and it results in edema and increased pressure in the region of the nerve ending which leads to paresthesia. Uh, we should not insert the needle inside a foramen and sometimes hemorrhage uh, with the presence of hemorrhage there will be increased pressure that also create paresthesia. So prevention is uh, proper care and handling, handling to injection control and cartridge so how do we manage parasitia first thing is uh, most parasitia will get resolved within eight weeks without any treatment uh, the first part is always reassuring the patient that it is a transient problem then uh, we need to follow up the patient for every two months so if sensory deficit is still more than one year consultation with a neurologist or oral surgeon next we have the facial nerve paralysis so this is uh, we learned in uh, our previous session how facial nerve paralysis is happening uh, that is while giving ia and b if the bone resistance is not obtained and if we are injecting the solution into the parotid gland where the nerve fibers of facial nerve is uh, present so that time uh, if we are injecting onto the facial nerve okay branches of facial nerve that will cause facial nerve paralysis that also temporary or transient problem so uh, it is uh, mostly associated with uh, inferior alveolar nerve block or the vazirani akinosi nerve block so if we can uh, prevent it by proper care and handling of injection and give by uh, doing in a proper way with uh, all the landmarks and other uh, proper criteria so managing is uh, reassure the patient and if sometimes the patient might be using contact lens that should be removed so an uh, eye patch uh, should be applied to affected eye or manually close the lower eyelid periodically to keep the cornea lubricated next we have Christmas Trismus is a pain and difficulty of opening uh, often after the posterior superior alveolar or inferior alveolar nerve block. So it is one to six days after the treatment. It is most commonly seen. Causes are the trauma to the muscles or blood vessels in the infratemporal fossa. So local anesthetic solution contaminated by alcohol or any other sterilizing solution produce irritation to the muscle and there will be also a low grade infection so we can prevent it by using sharp sterile or disposable needle and proper care of uh, proper care and handling of this uh, cartridge and always try to do the procedure as a traumatic so management uh, Christmas management uh, we can uh, with heat therapy warm saline rinse uh, we can give analgesics like aspirin then uh, muscle relaxants uh, if necessary such as uh, diazepam then 10 milligram uh, twice a day then physiotherapy for five minutes uh, every three to four hours 
if there is infection we can give antibiotics for seven days improvement start within two to three days and recovery will be done uh, in a range of four to twenty weeks so surgical intervention uh, might be required in some cases so next we have the soft tissue injury so that is trauma to lip or the tongue caused by biting or chewing these tissues while still anesthetized especially with children so it is most commonly seen uh, when INB nerve block where the tongue and lip will be anesthetized and patient won't realize it so always keep a cotton roll uh, between the lips and teeth warn the patient and self and warning sticker should be given uh, for the parents to notice it soft tissue injury uh, we can manage it uh, by providing analgesics if for pain and antibiotics if there is any infection warm saline rinse to aid in decrease the swelling and petroleum jelly to cover the lesion and minimize the irritation then we have hematoma so hematoma is a effusion of the blood into extravascular spaces which can result from uh, damaging of a blood vessel so caused by uh, piercing to artery or vein uh, when giving the injection so most commonly occur with IANB and posterior superior alveolar nerve block so this hematoma will be seen 7 to 14 days so prevention is understanding uh, the proper anatomy of uh, nerve and its surrounding structures use shorter needles for posterior superior alveolar nerve then minimize the number of needle penetration never use a needle as a probe in the tissue and management we can uh, give direct pressure on the site of bleeding apply cold moist towels to affected area each 20 minutes and advise the patient about soreness and limitation of the mouth opening possibly so we should uh, educate the patient regarding the complications and next we have the pain on injection so pain on injection causes by the careless injection of the palatal injection is always uh, painful and dull uh, dullness of the needle because of the multiple injection also create pain and rapid deposition also will result in pain so always uh, we should adhere to proper techniques uh, and always we should use sharp needles that is nowadays there is no reusage of needles we are using only uh, disposable syringes and needles uh, we can uh, use topical anesthetics before giving injection inject slowly next we have infection infection uh, the, the main cause is the contamination of the needle now, now it is very rare because uh, as I said it is uh, disposable needles are being used nowadays the reusage of needles is uh, almost not there in any of the uh, dental clinics so before that uh, we had disposable needle and glass cartridge that time this was a common thing infection so if infection is there we can manage it with antibiotics such as penicillin and last one in local complication the edema the main causes uh, trauma infection allergy hemorrhage injection of uh, injection of irritating solution that is alcohol or cold solution we can manage it by just giving analgesics for pain and if the large edema is there we can uh, prescribe antibiotics now let's move on to systemic uh, complication first one is overdose so overdose uh, reaction is occurring when the drug access to the circulatory system so normally there is constant absorption of the drug from its site of administration into the circulatory system and a steady removal from the blood by the liver but uh, if overdose is happening there will be symptoms in the body so what are the predisposing factors so patient factors and drug factors are there patient factors uh, we have age weight medications gender presence of disease genetics mental attitude 
So regarding age, uh, the function of absorption, metabolism and excretion are diminished in older age. Okay, old age, it is a problem. So the increasing the half-life of the drug in circulation of blood and weight, uh, greater body weight, we require a larger dose. And people who are under medication are also should be uh, uh, considered before giving injection. Uh, such as uh, phenytoin, quinidine, uh, such thing uh, has a uh, effect on our local anesthetic. Then regarding the gender, so renal functions during pregnancy may impair leading to increased local anesthesia blood level. So we need to be careful when giving injection for pregnant women. Then presence of any kind of disease such as hepatic, renal, heart failure, so in this case, uh, there are chances of increase in uh, anesthesia blood level and genetics also is there. Uh, some of the deficiency of enzymes such as pseudocholinesterase and mental attitude. Patients who are fearful, they need large dose and uh, in such patients, we need to uh, make the patient first uh, relax and then provide the dosage. Uh, regarding the drugs, so we were talking about the patient factors in overdosage, the predisposing factors. So in drug factors, we have first thing is uh, vasoactivity, that is the vasodilating properties of LA. So short duration uh, of clinical anesthesia uh, and increased blood level of uh, local anesthesia will uh, create vasodilation and concentration lower concentration should be given and dose smallest dose should be given so in the drug factors the first one is vasoactivity so vasodilating properties of la leads to shorter duration of clinical anesthesia and increased blood level of la and concentration lower concentration should be given dose smallest dose should be given so route of administration uh, should be careful about the intravascular injection so rate of injection should be slow and vasoconstrictors uh, which should decrease the absorption of the drug if vasoconstrictor is not there there will be rapid uptake so how do we prevent it use of aspiration syringe need use a needle no smaller than 25 gauge aspirate in at least two planes before injection and always give slow injection so Clinical manifestation uh, will be uh, the apprehension, uh, there will be slurred speech, there will be excitability, uh, sweating, vomiting, failure to follow commands, elevated blood pressure, heart rate and respiratory rate. Uh, there are chances of uh, tonic clonic seizure, CNS depression or myocardiac depression and cardiac arrest is also there. So management uh, for mild onset uh, and severe onset, we can uh, manage it differently. So the basic emergency management is first thing is uh, proper positioning. This is a synonym P C A P D that is positioning, circulation, airway, breathing and definite care. So for mild overdose, for mild overdose, we need to give PCAB. That is, uh, first reassure the patient, administer oxygen, then uh, monitor and record the vital signs. We can give IV anti-convulsants such as diazepam. Uh, it is an optional, and we can go for emergency medical assistance. So in cases of mild overdose, that is patient is conscious and it is slow onset, that is greater than 5 minutes. So in that case, we need to reassure the patient, administer oxygen via nasal canal, monitor and record vital signs and we can give IV anticonvulsants, that is diazepam 5 mg per minute but only uh, if required, it is optional. And if it is uh, greater than 15 minutes, that is an onset, it's a very slow onset, reassure the patient, then oxygen 
The same procedure oxygen via nasal canal monitor the vital signs but the IV anticonvulsants is mandatory. And before discharging we can uh, take for medical assistance. Severe overdose that is patient is unconscious. So in that case that is rapid onset within one minute we need to uh, first protect the patient uh, then we uh, need to immediate ask for the emergency medical assistance we need to start the VLS that is a basic life support and IV anticonvulsants should be given immediately then if the severe overdose where patient is unconscious with slow onset that is 5 to 15 minutes first of all we need to give anticonvulsants that is uh, through IV diazepam or midazolam and ask for uh, medical assistance uh, BLS and also along with we should give vasopressors and IV fluids that is uh, the first one overdose age now we have the allergy allergy uh, that is hypersensitive state acquired through exposure to a particular allergen so allergic reactions cover a broad spectrum of clinical manifestation ranging from mild and delayed response uh, occurring as long as 48 hours after exposure to allergen or to immediate and threatening reaction develop within seconds of exposure so what are the predisposing factors so predisposing factors could be the first one is uh, sodium bisulfate sodium bisulfate could be a allergic predisposing factor and uh, epinephrine epinephrine then latex so these uh, could be predisposing factors so the clinical manifestation basically there will be urticaria and angioedema urticaria and angioedema will be there then clinical manifestation there will be bronchospasm such as uh, dyspnea wheezing flushing cyanosis perspiration tachycardia and respiratory distress uh, sometimes extension of edema to the larynx uh, it could be a life threatening emergency for generalized anaphylaxis uh, there will be skin reactions smooth muscle spasm of GIT and uh, bronchospasm will be there respiratory distress cardiovascular collapse so management uh, skin reaction uh, we can uh, expect uh, a delayed reaction or immediate reaction for respiratory reaction there will be bronchospasm and laryngeal edema for skin reaction if it is a delayed one uh, our PCAB will be like uh, first oral histamine blocker 50 milligram diphenylhydrine or chlorpheniramine should be given and observe the patient for one hour then medical consultation and if patient is drowsiness not allowed to leave the clinic ask the patient to uh, rest for a while so for immediate reaction so we should uh, first administer epinephrine 0.3 milligram uh, intramuscularly then intramuscular histamine blocker then we can ask for medical consultation and observe for one hour and prescribe oral histamine blocker for three days so for respiratory problem uh, we should administer oxygen then epinephrine and similarly uh, the histamine blocker and prescribe oral histamine for three days for laryngeal edema also we should follow this epinephrine uh, histamine blocker and sometimes we need cricothyrotomy that is very rare cases and uh, generalized anaphylaxis uh, if the patient is unconscious we should uh, follow this epinephrine oxygen uh, checking vital signs and intramuscular histamine blocker and corticosteroids uh, that is all about uh, complications of local anesthesia so we learned the complications uh, in two category one is a local complication and second one is systemic complications Local complications, uh, we have uh, needle breakage, ocular complications, paresthesia, fa facial nerve paralysis, trismus, soft tissue injury, 
hematoma pain on injection infection and edema whereas in systemic we have just two overdose and allergy but you need to explain it in detail overdose and allergy uh, how to manage it how to prevent it what are the uh, drugs used and you should follow this uh, PCAP uh, code so in overdose uh, there will be predisposing factors uh, that is uh, drug factors and patient factors and also uh, we have clinical manifestations and manage in different category that is a mild overdose and severe overdose in mild overdose we have slow onset that is uh, more than 5 minutes and more than 15 minutes and rapid onset is also there within 1 minute and 5 to 15 minutes and we need to write about the management and regarding the allergy uh, we have uh, the clinical manifestations and also the skin reaction respiratory and generalized anaphylaxis and also the uh, management accordingly so this is a very commonly asked question uh, it could be asked a short essay or a long essay so hope you understood the complications of local anesthesia so i'll come up with a new topic in oral surgery thank you